Would you like to easily be able to analyze blocks of text with machine learning? In this video, that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do. Hi guys, my name is Sam with Complete Coding. And in this video, we're going to be learning how we can easily set up an API that allows us to analyze blocks of text using machine learning. The service we're going to be using is called Amazon Comprehend. This is a service which is designed to make analyzing text really easily. It has a range of different functionality from extracting keywords from your text to analyzing whether it's a positive or a negative sentiment, as in how happy was the person sending the email. We're going to be doing this all behind an API. So now we're going to jump into the code and see how we can set that up. Now that we're in the code, there are two things that we need to do to get this API endpoint working to allow us to analyze our text content. The first one is to create an endpoint and the code inside there to run and actually deal with Comprehend. And then the serverless YAML file adding the functions and permissions that we need to run them. So inside our endpoints folder, we're going to create a new file called analyze.js. And this is going to be our API endpoint. To start with, we're going to declare our handler. So exports.handler. And this is going to be an async function that takes the event from API gateway and enters the function. We're going to pass out the body as this is going to post, we're going to be posting up the data. So const body equals json dot pass event dot body. And on this body, we're expecting there to be some text. So we need to check if there is, and if there isn't, we need to return a 400 response. So if there is not a body or not body dot text in here, we're going to return a response dot underscore 400. And again, we need to import this. So at the top of our file, const response equals require dot dot slash to go into our common folder and API responses. So now back here, response 400, and we're going to pass in a message. That message is going to read something along the lines of uh, no text field on the body. If we do have a text field, then we can carry on. So let's extract that text just to make it slightly easier for ourselves. So const text equals body dot text. And now we need to define the parameters that we're going to be passing into Comprehend. These parameters are pretty simple. So we're going to create an object. And inside this object, it has a language code. And we're assuming that they're going to be sending a message in English. Comprehend does support other languages. But for now, we're going to be sticking with English. Make sure you've typed language correctly, unlike myself. And then we also need to pass in a text list. This needs to be an array containing all of our blocks of text. So we can pass in a single block of text just like that. 
Now we've got that, we need to make the requests to Amazon Comprehend. Because these are gonna be a multitude of asynchronous requests, we're gonna wrap it all in a try catch. So we'll start with that. So try and then catch. And we're actually gonna start with the error section. So if there is an error, we're gonna console log out the error. And then we're going to return a 400 response similar to up here. So return response dot underscore 400, passing in an object with a message of failed to work with comprehend. So now that's complete, we can actually dive in to our main bulk of the code, which is gonna be the asynchronous testing inside here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to be using Comprehend through the AWS SDK. So if the first thing we need to do is scroll up to the top of the file and import that AWS SDK. So const AWS equals require and we're going to require the AWS-SDK. And then we're also going to define the comprehend object. So const comprehend equals a new instance of AWS.comprehend, just like that. So now if we go down into our try, we can actually de define our requests to comprehend. There are two types of requests that we're going to be using here as they are the most important. That is extracting entities, which is keywords and their type, and then analyzing the sentiment, which is how happy or sad the message was. We're gonna start with the entity extraction, so const entity results equals an await because this is going to be asynchronous and then it's comprehend dot batch detect entities just like that and we're going to pass in our params and finally we're going to add dot promise onto the end to make sure that it runs asynchronously. The way that this returns is it returns a large object. So we're gonna simplify it by saying const entities equals entity results. This has a parameter of results list and we are passing up just a single text object. So it's going to be the first field in that list. And that is going to define entities. As you can see, it's gonna define a batch entity result. We can do a very similar set of steps with the detect sentiment. So const sentiment results equals await comprehend dot batch detect sentiment. It uses the same params and again we're going to add dot promise onto the end and it returns the same result format so we're going to be doing the same extraction so const sentiment equals sentiment results dot result list zero. Now that we have both of the sentiment and the analysis and the entities, 
we can put them together into a response object. So const response data is an object with entities and a sentiment. Now that we have this, we're going to start by just console logging it out. The response data. And then we're also going to return a 200 response, which is that data. So return response dot underscore 200. And instead of passing up an object that we're manually typing in, we can just pass up this response data object, just like that. This means if everything is successful, the response that we'll get will have two fields on it, entities and sentiment, which each have their own properties and they will be passed all the way back to wherever called this API. Now that we've set this up, we need to head into serverless like this so that we can set up the AWS functions. Inside here, we can start by creating the function, which is going to be analyze. This is going to have a handler. This handler is lambdas slash endpoints slash analyze dot handler. We also, because this is going to be an API, we need to define the events and set the first instance of the event to be HTTP with a path. We're going to go with just a simple path of analyze. The method, because we are sending up data, needs to be post. And we're going to set cause to be true as well. So if we save this, we now have this function. If we leave it as is, there is going to be a slight issue. That is, we haven't given this Lambda permission to use comprehend. To do this, we go back into our provider and we need to define an I am role state ments. Make sure that is typed correctly, which it is not. So it's statements, perfect. And this is an array. So the first one we have is an effect. And we're going to be allowing some functionality. The action. Again, this is an array. And we're going to be allowing comprehend colon star. So that means that we can use all of the functionality on comprehend. The last thing we need to do is define the resource which we can define as everything. This means that it will be applied to this function and any other functions that we built, which will mean that when we are inside here, we successfully call the comprehend service. Now that this is all complete, we can head into our terminal and we can run SLS deploy which will build and deploy this new API. This takes a little bit of time, so I'll get back to you when that is done. Time is a tool you can put on the wall or wear it on your wrist. The past is far behind us. The future doesn't exist. Now that that has finished deploying, we can see that we get a new API URL. So we're going to copy this and then head over to Postman. We need to use Postman as this is a post request, so we can't easily do it through a browser. As I said, it is a post request, and we're going to paste in the URL there. As it's a post, we need to send up a body with a type of raw and a format of JSON. This is going to be an object. And as we've written in the code, we expect there to be a field of text. 
this text field needs to be a string. And what I've done is I've prepared a short script that I'm going to paste into here. You can paste in whatever text you want. Now, if I hit send, it's going to go off to the API and we get a 200 response. We can see that in this response, we have entities. We have a title of complete coding. We have a person of Sam and we have an organization of YouTube. If we minimize the entities, we also have a sentiment section where they say the sentiment is neutral. It's got an 18% positive sentiment, a 0% negative sentiment, and an 81% positive, uh, neutral sentiment. In total, that results in a neutral sentiment. In this video, we have learned how we can create an API to analyze text that is sent up to it. We've used Amazon's Comprehend service to be able to extract key entities from the text, as well as analyze the sentiment of that message. These two key features can then be built into your application so you can do real-time analysis of messages or of emails or any other text format. This can be used in a wide range of things and your imagination can lead you to some really creative uses of this data. So in this video, if you have learned anything new, it would really help if you smash that like button as it helps the YouTube algorithm show this video to more developers just like yourselves. And also if you want to find out about more serverless technologies that you can use in your companies, then make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you get notified next time I upload another serverless AWS video. Thank you, and I'll see you again in the next video.